Hello, and welcome to this introduction video to the game's SDK for Alexa. In this video, we will 1. Cover things we need to get started, 2. Configure our cloud services, 3. Create our Unity project, 4. Create our Alexa skill, 5. Test the flow of our project, and 6. Go over some next steps. The instructions documented here are readily available at the URL provided on the screen. The demo we will be building will be a simple light control demo, where we will be changing the color of a cube on the screen. Before we begin, be sure to have the following. Unity 3D. I will be using 2018.4.12.f1. An IDE, such as Visual Studio or VS Code. I will be using VS Code. AWS account. An Amazon developer account. A PubNub account. Node.js version 4.5 or above, and the Ask CLI. Links to these are provided in the description below. Once you have all these items, we can begin our service configuration. We have two cloud services we will be using. The first is AWS, and the second is PubNum. During this section, we will go into AWS and create an Amazon Cognito identity pool and attach policies to this identity pool to give access to our DynamoDB table for our Alexa skill. In PubNub, we will create a new app to enable real-time messaging between the skill and the game. First, we will go ahead and create our Amazon Cognito identity pool. First, go to Amazon Cognito and log into AWS. Go to Manage Identity Pools, give it a name, check the Enable Access to Unauthenticated Identities, click Create Pool. Under View Details, you will see that we will be creating two new IAM roles, a auth role and an unauth role. Click allow. Make note of this identity pool ID and this region. Next, go to IAM, go to roles, Scroll down till you see your two Cognito roles. Click on the unauth role. Click attach policies. And search Domino DB. For this demo, we're going to be giving our unauth role full access to Domino DB. In a full production game, it is safer to create your own policy with specific access to your Alexa skills Damra DB table. In our case for now, Damra DB full access is fine. Go ahead and attach policy. Next, we will create our PubNub Go to your PubNub admin portal. Go to create new app. Give it a name. Click other messaging use cases. Click create. Go ahead and click on your new app. You will see a new free key. Click on the free key. Make note of the publish key and subscribe key. Scroll down. In storage and playback, go ahead and flip that on. We're going to keep our retention at one day. This is the shortest amount of time we can do it. The reason why we need retention is in case if the game loses connection with the skill, it can play catch up. Make sure stream controller is also enabled. Click save changes. Before moving on, you should have the following. Your identity pool ID, 
the region of the identity pool. Both of these are incognito. Your publish key, your subscribe key, both from PubNub. Once you have these, we are ready to move on to the creation of our Unity project. We will create our Unity project. We will then import our games SDK. Then we will add our control script. And then we will add our con control game object into the scene. To get started, open Unity. Click new. Give it a name. Make sure 3D is selected. Hit create. This may take a little bit of time. Once Unity is open, click in your sample scene hierarchy. Right click, create new 3D object, cube. Go to component, add, add a new rigid body. Make sure to uncheck the use gravity option. Click on your main camera from your sample scene hierarchy. The position of Y drop down, down to zero. And save your scene. Next, go to your asset store. Search games SDK for Alexa. Click import. It may say download. After you download it, go ahead and click import. You should have a screen like this. Make sure everything is selected. Hit import. This may take some time. Once the import is completed, you should see a new folder here. Games SDK for Alexa. Right click inside your assets folder. Click create. C sharp script. Give it a name. Go ahead and double click the script. Should open a new Visual Studio code. For the next couple steps, we will be working straight out of the games SDK documentation. Found here. We will go to, to the light control tutorial, creating the Unity project. We will scroll down and copy and paste this code block. You'll notice that this copy and paste was step four. And you can see step five is here and step six. These steps in the code correspond to the step inside the documentation that we are currently on. So let's work at step five, adding our variables. Simply copy and paste. These are our variables for our script. Next, we will initialize our manager. Our 
I'm going to move the documentation to my other screen. Just remember I'm copying and pasting straight from the step in the documentation. For step seven, we will notify that the still has completed setup and that the game has received the user's player ID that uniquely identifies that player in the DynamoDB table of session attributes. We will get back to this later. Next, we're going to listen for key presses. This allows us to have minimal input in the game to show off switching, changing session attributes while the game is being played without using the skill. Next, we are going to fill out the action of the space press. In this action, we are simply turning the light color to blue. We will fill out update light in the future. What we're doing here is we're checking to see if Alexa user diamond key has been set in player purse. If it has been set, then we can go ahead and get the session attributes. If not, there's no way to get the user session attributes because the Alexa user diamond DB key is what uniquely identifies the user in our table. In order to receive this, we have to complete setup. Next, we're going to listen for new messages coming from the Alexa skill. Go ahead and copy and paste. So we receive event data. We're going to store that event data inside of a new dictionary that has a string and an object. We call it message. We then see if the Alexa user ID is the t message type. If it is, we can set the diamond row key for the Alexa manager. If that works, we're able to do get session attributes. If this Dynamo user key is not available, this get session attributes will fail and will log an error. If not, it will do a switch statement on the message type. If it is the Alexa user ID, this was hit. We can then confirm the setup, which brings us back to here that says, hey, the setup state in our attributes is now completed and then we can set the new session attribute so then the skill knows, hey, the game has received the user key. We are now ready to use the skill with the game. If it was a color type, we're going to update the color of the light. If it was a state, we're going to update the state on or off. If it was a gate object request, we're going to get an object in a direction and then return it back to the skill on the fly. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and fill out step 11. This method in particular is pretty interesting. What it actually does is it receives the request of get object. It will then, oh, minor issue there. It will receive, it will create a new message to a lots of my bad. And then it will create a bunch of vectors these vectors are associated to what the user requested. We're going to just create them on the fly. Then we're going to initially set our direction vector to forward. Then we're going to switch on the message, this message here. Remember, this message was passed from our listener. If the message was forward, backward, right, left, up, or down, we're going to set the direction to 
those accordingly. Then we're going to put the message to Alexa and add nothing as the object that's in front. Then we're going to check to see if the ray cast hit from that direction and hit an object. If it did, we can add and remove the nothing object and then add our rigid body name. In our case, if we request Alexa, what is in front of me, she will then respond, cube is in front of you. Then we're going to send back to the Alexa still right here. Next, step 12, we're going to update the light. This both updates the color of the light or the state of the light. So we get our session attributes. We see if the type value was color or if it was state. If it was color, we're going to set our new session attributes, that color to the value of the color that we received. Then we'll switch on that value and then change the light cube renderer to be that color. Or if it was a state change, we will either enable or disable the renderer for the light cube. And then we'll set the session attributes. Next, we want to get notified if there was an error in our set sessions, set session attributes and if there was an error sending the message back to Alexa. That's it. Now we have a completed script that is ready to use. Going back into Unity, we will go back to our scene view, go back to the hierarchy, Right click, create a new empty game object, give it a name. Amazon Alexa Manager in this case. Oh, my bad. When you create your light control strip, make sure that there's no space. Now you can go ahead and click and drag it in here. There you go. So now we have our Amazon Alexa manager with our newly created light control script attached to it. Like I said, make sure there's no space here on the name. Now we can actually fill some of these out. The only one we can't fill out is channel. So we're going to take our PubNub publish key that we made note of earlier, put it at the top, same with the subscribe key, and then our table name, make sure it is Alexa plus Unity test. This is hard coded and later on in the video I will show you where this was defined in the skill. Next, copy the identity pool ID that you made note of earlier. If you have a AWS region other than US East 1 in your identity pool, like right here, make sure that this value matches this value. We're going to check the debug box so we can get some logs. And then for the light queue, game object, we're going to drag our cube in there, and then we will do the same thing with our main camera. That's it. We have now completed the Unity project, and with a few minor updates, we will be able to test this. Now, let's set up our Alexa skill. First, we're going to clone our skill. Navigate to my example skill template at this URL right here. 
go ahead and download zip. And we're going to save the zip straight to my desktop. We're going to extract it. Then we're going to right click our VS code, add a new window, file, open folder, our skill template. You'll see we have a few uh, folders and a few files in the still.json. This defines our the name, the description, the summary, and some example phrases we can use to interact with the skill. You'll see in our models, we have uh, ENUS. This defines our invocation name, all of our intents, cancel, help, stop, flip switch, change color with some sample utterances, get color, get object and direction, the states, the colors that we're going to be choosing from, our directions, and then our dialogue helpers. We're gonna mainly focus here in the index.js file. Before we move any further, go ahead and go to terminal, new terminal, do cd, and navigate all the way down to the custom folder in the Lambda folder. Do npm install. This will st install all of our dependencies, which is our Alexa plus Unity and our AST SDK. The AST SDK also contains the AWS SDK, which we will also need. If we go back to our index.js, you will see we require our Alexa SDK and our AWS SDK. We define our region to be US East 1. This will change based on your identity pool. Now you see step one, it says require. This is very similar to our Unity project where the documentation will help walk us through the creating the index script. So we're just going to copy and paste. You'll see right away, we need a PubNub key and a subscribe key. Again, we're just gonna take those from where we noted them. And then this third parameter, as it says here, it enables verbose login. Next, we define some speech outputs. You'll notice that we have a setup and normal speech for the launch. The setup says before we begin playing, we need to go through some setup. I've sent your player ID to your Let's app. You will need to input this ID when in the game when prompted. Then you'll see a normal, welcome to the Unity plus Alexa test. So when setup has uh, is occurring, uh, the Unity project hasn't said, okay, we're done setting up. So the skill will say this until the game has synced with the skill. After the game has synced, we can then say, welcome to Unity plus Alexa test all by itself. We also handle some errors. In our launch request, this is when the skills of initially launched and opened. We need to add a setup state check to make sure that if we are in the setup state, make sure that the game is also aware of this state. We set our attributes based on the result of this method here, and then we save our uh, persistent attributes in our DynamoDB table. 
this in progress flip switch, we just made sure that the dialog is completed and we have a value whether we want to flip the switch on or off. And then in the completed switch intent, this is when the dialog state has been completed and we do have that value. We can go ahead and create a payload for the new state. And real quick, I'm going to bring in our games SDK on the Unity side here. So you can see where these kind of link up together. So you see that we have a payload object state. If we look in our listener, we have a state here. Notice how state is exactly the same as state. This message will get fed through the on a lots of message and then will hit this position in this uh, switch statement. Next, we're going to actually send it to the game. So this payload object by itself doesn't do anything. We actually have to send it to the game so the game knows what to do. So we await a publish message. We publish our payload object on our channel. If there was an error, we'd say there was an error. Next, very similar for the color. We wait till the user has provided a uh, available color. Next, we will create the payload. And send the payload. Notice how this payload object says type color. This will hit this color with a available color. And then we publish that message. And if there was an error, send the error. If not, then speak with light is now the requested color. Our get color intent receives the color that the session attributes has stored. So remember here, we don't actually update the session attributes to be the value of color. We do that on the game side down here. We do attributes color. We set the new color attribute here, not in the skill. Next, we have in progress get object in direction. This waits for direction from a user. And then we have our intent handler. We're going to send a payload. Now I'm using ID, the slot ID here, so it's consistent. Now this one is a special one, the get object in direction, because we actually need to publish a message to the game and then listen for the game to respond back with what's in front of us. So we're essentially treating the game as a highly available API and we're calling into that specific instance of the game and we're seeing, hey, there's an object either in front, next, and if there is one, we can then send it right back to the skill, and then the skill can reply it currently. There is a object in front or whatever direction the user requested of you. You'll notice this 4,000, that is 4,000 milliseconds or four seconds. This is our timeout. So if there's no response from the game within that timeout, then handle with error. Next, we have our help intent, self-explanatory. If the user needs help, they can just ask for help. The cancel and stop, we're just going to shut the skill down. Session ended, just cleans up. 
and then our error handler just says, hey, there was an error that occurred. Next, we put all these handlers into our skill builder, add our error handlers, and this is where that value from our Unity game right here, this table name, that table name is exactly the same as this table name here. And we're going to auto create that table. So if you change this, you need to change it in Unity as well. We're not quite done yet. We're going to fill out our launch setup. And we're going to create create a new channel, a unique channel for this player, and then report that ID back to the user so the user can input it into the game. We're going to next create a new payload. This one is meant to send the user ID. Note, it says it's a user ID. This user ID will be hit here and here. We're going to send that ID to our game. When that game receives the ID, it will set the Alexa Manager download key to be this value of user ID. And then it will confirm setup and change the in progress to completed value. Lastly, we're going to set our default attributes. Our default setup state when the still is initially launched is started. And then we create a new unique channel. This makes sure that there's no other channel within this table for any other player. So then there's no conflicts. And that's it. That is our entire bulk of our skill. And now we are ready to deploy the skill. If you go back to terminal, type CD, and go back to the root directory. If you hit LS, you should see the still.json. Next, you can do MP, sorry, not NPM, my bad. Ask, deploy. What this will do is it will deploy the entire skill, all the models, it will create the skill in your um, developer console, and it will also create a Lambda function for you. This will take a little bit of time to happen. Now that the skill is deployed, we can lower and we are ready to do test. To, in order to test, we're going to first retrieve our player ID, and then we're gonna include that player ID into the Unity project, and then we're gonna try it out. Let's first go to our developer console. You will see a newly created Unity-like control. You'll see here our interaction model has the stuff that we have defined inside of our JSON. And you'll note that this JSON is the exact same. You can go to test. You're going to go open Unity light. Now keep that there. You're not going to press enter yet. You're going to add a new tab and go to your Lambda management console. You're going to click on your new function name. You're going to scroll down here to execution role. Click view the role in IAM. You're going to attach new policy. You're going to search for DiamondDB. You're going to attach the policy. Remember, as I said in Cognito, this should be 
in a full deployment, you should have this set to just that table that you are targeting or any other specific resources. You should not give it full access, only access to a specific table. In our case, we, this is okay for now. Once that is done, you can now hit enter. Error. Please try again later. Now, you may receive a couple errors when you first try and open this. As stated in the documentation, you will likely get an error the first couple of times initially opening the still. This is because the still needs to create the DiamondDB table, and that can take a couple minutes for the DiamondDB table to be created. There is a link here to an issue, in an open issue for the Alexa SDK that makes note of this. Go ahead and try it again. Please try again later. First, be sure to quit before you do try again. Welcome to the Unity Plus Alexa test. Before we begin playing, we need to go through some setup. I have sent your player ID to your Alexa app. You will need to input this ID in the game when prompted. What shall we do? For us, our player ID was given to us here in the developer console. We can now have our Unity right next to it. And we can take this ID and plug it right into the channel. H O B B R and go ahead and save. Next, you can hit the play button and you'll see a bunch of stuff just happened in our console here. We initialized the, the manager we started the scene on this channel and we're listening to messages on this channel. There was a new message from history. Remember the storage retention that we set in our pubnum. We received a new Alexa user ID. This is the user ID. We successfully got the session attributes and then we successfully set the new attribute saying, hey, setup has been completed. So now we're going to quit our skill. We're going to go ahead and open our skill back up. Welcome to the Unity Plus Alexa test. What shall we do? You'll see that the two welcome messages are different now. Since we've completed setup, we no longer get our before we begin playing. Now we can play around with this. We can go into our Unity and press our space bar. We just changed our color to blue. Now we can ask. The light the is light. currently blue. What's next? The light is blue. We can do change light to yellow. Light is now yellow. What's next? And remember, we are getting the session attributes. We see that the requested color is yellow. Then we actually set the session attributes with this updated color. This change light to yellow is not, this attribute there is not being stored um, from the skill. It's being stored from the game. So now we can ask what color the light is again. The light is currently yellow. What's next? Yeah, so like I said, you can hit spacebar again, ask the same question. The light is currently blue. What's next? Now for this next part, we're going to get the object in front of us. We're gonna try that one more time. Currently, cube is in front of you. What's next? I had a minor issue here. This will be updated when 
uh, the video will be uploaded. The issue was I had constant speech text here and constant reprompt, and I was modifying a constant. After that change was made, it now works. You should never get there was an issue here at this first test. But now if you do what is behind me. Currently, nothing is behind of you. What's next? Oh, well, some of the text is a little bit wonky, but this is this is a just a quick demo. And we can then ask what is in front of me again. Currently, cube is in front of you. What's next? And we can do change light to yellow. Light is now yellow. What's next? And so on. You get the gist. Congratulations, you have now added a lot of inter interaction to a new Unity project. Uh, in terms of next steps, try implementing the package into one of your own Unity projects. If you run into any issues, you can check out the docs at the URL provided on the screen. And for further support, leave a comment on this video or send an email to gamesdkSupport at talon.tech. Thank you.